1850, French scientist Auguste Mariette went to Egypt looking for manuscripts, but accidentally found a head of a sphinx sticking out of the dunes. He cleared the sand and figured out the sphinx was guiding the entrance to some underground construction. Several months later, he finally entered the Serapium of Saqqara. Inside, he found an enormous granite sarcophagi with remnants of 64 bulls. Scientists are still amazed by the tech that the ancient Egyptians used to transport those enormous boxes. The Serapium was built around the year 3000 before the Common Era. It was an underground tomb built to honor the sacred Apis bulls of ancient Egypt. It had a long hallway, almost 500 feet long, with giant stone rooms on both sides. Some of the sarcophagi weighed as much as 50 average cars, and all of them were made with super precision with exact 90-degree angles. These sarcophagi were beautifully decorated with hieroglyphs and carvings that told stories about the lives and importance of the Apis bulls. Now, there are 24 sarcophagi left. In ancient Egypt, Apis bulls were very special animals connected to the deity Pata. They thought the bulls carried Pata's spirit and wisdom, helped the pharaoh, and protected the Egyptians. Priests looked for special markings on young bulls to find Apis bulls. It could be a white triangle on its forehead, which symbolized divine light, a shape on its back like a vulture's wing, and a scarab shape under its tongue which stood for rebirth. If a bull had these signs, they believed it was chosen by Pata and treated it like royalty. The chosen bulls lived in a special temple in Memphis, the city where they worshipped Pata. They received the best care and offerings from visitors who wanted their blessings. When an Apis bull passed away, it was treated with great honor and mummified. When Mariette entered the Serapia, he noticed traces of rollers on the gallery's floor and found two wooden horizontal winches. Each had eight levers. Later, other explorers saw double rails. The burial chambers were lower than the hallway floor. To get the boxes into place, workers filled the chambers with sand so the sarcophagi could be rolled in straight. Then they slowly removed the sand to gently lower the boxes into perfectly cut spaces in the bedrock. A carved stone sign found in the Serapium said it took 28 days to move just one sarcophagus and its lid into its spot during the time of Ptolemy II. The extreme precision of the sarcophagi with 90-degree angles also has an explanation. Ancient Egyptians wrote texts, or rather, papyrus, on geometry a long time ago. It shows that they knew the approximate number pi and could calculate the volume of a pyramid with its top cut off. If they could figure out complicated math like that back then, it makes sense that they could also carve perfectly flat surfaces 500 years later. All this sounds pretty legit, but some people think certain things don't add up here. The size of boxes is way larger than the size of bulls, yet they buried pharaohs in tiny coffins that barely fit their bodies. The sarcophagi are made out of granite with crazy precision, and they could have just used limestone, which would have made things way easier. The transportation of the boxes seems pretty simple, but only in theory. If one person could pull about 440 pounds, then at least 250 people would be needed to pull just one box. The tunnels in the Serapium are really narrow, only about two feet wider than the boxes themselves, there's no way hundreds of people could have squeezed into those tight spaces to pull the boxes. And even if they did, how would they turn the box in the cramped corridor, lower it into its niche, and place it perfectly in the middle? Somehow, they did this 24 times, and every box is centered perfectly. Plus, the chambers were dusty, and there were no signs of soot from lamps. This means they must have worked in almost complete darkness. The real use of the boxes could also be different. A long time ago, even before the Egyptian pharaohs ruled, the local people already knew how to use fermentation. It happens when tiny organisms called yeast eat certain ingredients like starch and turn them into gas and ethanol. So someone in ancient Egypt probably put food like barley, bread, and even meat inside a giant stone box, then closed it tight with a heavy lid. These stone boxes, carved from granite, were so precisely made that they were almost completely sealed, 
so nothing could escape from it. As the yeast inside the box started working, it created more and more CO2 gas. It built up pressure inside the box. The granite boxes were incredibly strong. They could handle more pressure than a car tire can hold. When granite was squeezed under such pressure, its crystals produced a tiny electric charge. This effect was possible because granite contains quartz, a material that reacts to pressure this way. The process also needed meat or animal parts, possibly to help the yeast grow better. Meat contains something called oleic acid, which yeast needs to keep growing and to survive the bad effects of the ethanol it produces. As the pressure inside the box kept growing, the combination of gases and electricity made these boxes not just ancient fridges, but powerful energy systems. Over time, the pressure inside got so strong that it could push the lid open and the gas would escape with a pop. But when people rediscovered the Serapium in 1850, they found old drawings that showed piles of stones stacked on top of some of the box lids. So, someone long ago probably tried to make the lids even heavier by adding extra weight to make it harder for the gas pressure to push them open. This extra weight also meant the quartz crystals in the granite could keep creating more electricity under all that pressure. If someone opened one of these stone boxes thousands of years later, they would only find bones from bowls that were placed in the box. And that's exactly what Mariette discovered in the 1850s. They opened the Serapium for visitors soon after the first excavations in the second half of the 19th century. Prince of Wales even had a luncheon with his guests in one of the sarcophagi. Sands and earthquakes made the site inaccessible for a while, but now you can visit it again and try to solve the mystery yourself. With new tech, we could have answers to many other historical mysteries soon. A team of scientists at Chicago's Field Museum of Natural History recently used a special CT scanner to learn more about ancient Egyptian mummies without unwrapping them. They gently rolled 26 mummies on custom carts out to the parking lot, where the scanner was waiting. It took thousands of detailed x-ray pictures of each mummy and their coffins. When all the pictures were put together, they created 3D images that showed what was inside, the skeletons and some artifacts. The scientists hope these images will help them understand ancient Egyptian burial practices from over 3,000 years ago. Even though the scanning process only took four days, it might take three years to study all the data. But scientists were able to learn some personal details about the mummies. One of the most popular mummified individuals at the museum, Lady Chinetta, was a woman who lived in ancient Egypt about 3,000 years ago. It looks like she passed away in her late 30s or early 40s. To make sure her body looked complete for the afterlife, embalmers put stuffing in her neck to keep it from collapsing. They also placed artificial eyes in her sockets so she would have eyes in the next world. She was wrapped in fancy linen and placed in a beautifully decorated coffin. The scans revealed that it had been carefully crafted with a slit at the back, which embalmers used to fit the body. There were also some artistic details on the surface, like markings for her knees. It looks like her burial was on the scale of a high-end luxury car. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.